us worship him. The one we can trust. The one that is reliable. Please open your mouth, lift up those holy hands. Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The one that is dependable. The one that is able. The one that has the final word concerning your life. The one in whose hand is your destiny. Father, we worship you, Lord. King of glory, we adore you this evening. We have come to meet no man but you, Lord. We don't want to look at the face of man. We want to look at your face, O God Almighty. Because in you there is good news. In you there is goodness. In you, O God Almighty, we can trust and lean on without being disappointed. Father, we are grateful unto you. Your children are here gathered this evening, Lord, as a family of Fresh Air Parish. King of glory, we know and we trust that you are in our midst. Father, Lord, we plead for mercy. That anything we have done that is not worthy, Lord, to stand before you, that your blood will flush it out of us. Help us not to continue in sin, thinking that grace will abound. Father, Lord Almighty, have mercy on us. Help us to count the number of our days, that they are like passing when it goes fast and out. Let us trust you. Let us walk worthy of your calling. Let men see you in us. Let us be the mirror through which men will see you, O God. In our lifestyle, in our talking, in our action, in everything we do, King of glory, let the glory of God abound in us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Tonight, Holy Spirit, take control. Speak to us expressly. Let none of us go back the same way. Give each and every one of us word for the season. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please kindly be seated. When Augusta started singing the final word, I'm like, what? My heart was just glowing. I was still cracking my brain. So as soon as I come out, I asked Augusta to sing final word for me, and then she just started. I'm like, God, is this you? Hallelujah. God bless you, choir. Indeed, God has the final word in our lives. He's the holder of our destiny. Just turn everything to him and you will smile the rest of your day. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is already here. I can see him communicating. Because I was not there when I prepared this message. Leader was not there, none of the choir members. And yet God is speaking exactly what I have on my book through those songs they have sung this evening. And I want to return all glory to him in Jesus' name. Stay on the word. That's what I'll be speaking on tonight. Stay on the word. Hallelujah. That's the final thing that can make you happy. A few days ago, the continental, intercontinental, you know, coordinator of prayers was speaking with me and my husband and he was rolling out biblical rules and principles of everyone that if we follow these principles nothing will you know go wrong in our lives when we know our roles as individuals husband's role wife's role children's role members role ministers role workers role Everything will work out so fine. And that's the word of God. And I was like, wow. This is just the simple truth. Know your assignment. Follow it. And you just see your way opening up very easily. Praise the Lord. My text will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. 1 Corinthians 15. 58. I'll be reading King James. Are we projecting King James version? I, I like it. It gives me the real meaning of what I want, except in some cases that I go to other versions. The Bible says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast. 
immovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. The topic is stay on the word. Don't let anything move you out of the word. Stay on it. It may tarry wait on it. Always do what? Abound in the work of the Lord. It didn't say abound. It said abounding. Continuous. Is that present continuous? Abounding. Going on is a process. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The Bible says that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How do you seek God? With eye service? Or with time? This time is convenient, the other time is not. Stay on the word could mean what? Remain on the word. The message Bible says, the last part of it, it said, throw yourself into the work of the master. Confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Hallelujah. Nobody saves God without a reward. Nobody. Because it's embedded in his word that he's a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. Stay on the word means depend on the word. Rely on the word. Don't move from the word. Trust in the word. Be faithful. Full of faith. The Bible calls faith what? A profession. Say for the profession of your faith. It's a profession, it's a career. Hold on to it. Be unshakable. Be resolute. Be dutiful. Be committed. Be dedicated. Be what? Unwavering. Even when the answer to your request isn't forthcoming. Many of us are tired. We just, eh, Father, do it for me. I used to love our people. And then you do ask something and then you say, that's the end. Tell us. No. Do what? Persist. There's a wicked king that Jesus referred to. And what did he say? He said, when even the wicked king, the woman was stopping the stomach and said, let me answer this one so I can have my peace. God wants you and I to do what? To disturb him concerning his word. Say, command ye me concerning my word. You are useful in God's hand. So do what? Stay on the word of God. Let's look at Jeremiah 51 verses 20 to 23. Jeremiah 51 20 to 23. Hallelujah. The Bible says what? Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I do what? Break in pieces the what? The nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. I love these verses, verses of the Bible. He said, and with thee will I break in pieces the horses and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariots and his rider. He said, with thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. 23. He said, I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and ruler. And so, you are useful in God's hands. So do what? Stay in the world. Many a times why we are defeated is because we don't even know our worth. We don't know our worth. When you know that you are a true child of God, you are living righteously, you are living holy, there is nothing you cannot do. Nothing is impossible with you. Why we are defeated is because we are one leg in with God, one leg out. We play Ludo game with God. You know, we die. Three, oh, he's six today. Oh, he's three. He's four. That's how we play God. And each time you play God, you are not doing God any harm. 
You are doing who? Yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where you would have reached in one month, you'll be reaching in 20 years. You cause what delay. By the time you start to repent, that's why God says, <laughs> don't continue in sin thinking that our oh, grace is there and our grace will abound. Grace is there. It will abound. No, 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 no. If you are playing Ludo with God, how many of us know Ludo game? Ludo with dice. The dice, you know, they say six. It turns to some places. Six, five, four, three, like that. One. If you are playing Ludo game with God, he will also play Ludo game with you. My stepmother used to say, ah, uh, Pekin, Kabi, Kabi. He said, Elder to Kabi, Kabi. You know, <laughs> he said, come on, Ade, she was saying that when you are doing, you are not straight with others. You are also cheating yourself. You think you are smart? No, you are not smart. You are trying to play game with God. Don't allow God to turn back. God does not, like, he will just turn his back on you and the devil will take over your life. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Let's quickly look at Ephesians 4.14, what it says. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 says, that we henceforth be no more, what? Children, tossed to and fro. The same thing with dice, we throw to the toss to and fro. By what? And carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Don't be a game that people are playing with you. Using your mentality, twisting the word of God just to fit their purpose. The word of God is true. It is infallible. cannot be changed. Hallelujah. So be firmly grounded in the word. Hold tenaciously to it as if your life depends on it. Praise the Lord. Many of us, we feel disappointed when we wait a little bit. Let's look at some of the things we should hold on to God for. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah 34, 16, if you are holding on to God, trusting God for a life partner, what should you do? He says, seek it out of the book of the Lord and read. Do what? Seek ye out of the book of the law and read. Who has another version? He says, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it had commanded and his spirit it had gathered them. God has spoken and it is what? Settled. He said in his mouth he has commanded and what? In your spirit do what? Gather it. Hold it like this and wait on God. Anna was a very old lady, I think it's in Luke 1, can't remember, old prophetess, who was waiting on God for the Messiah. And she told God, Don't let me die until I see this Messiah. And the moment she saw, she said, Oh, I can now go and rest in peace. That was her heart desire. Praise the Lord. Some of us are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I've been married one year, two years is becoming an embarrassment. What do I do? Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 14. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 14 says what? Thou shalt be blessed above all people. They shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. God has promised you fruitfulness and also even your animals. So if you are rearing you are, you know, a rare of animals and then you have goat, it must give birth. Chicken must lay eggs. You know, whatever animals you are rearing must be fruitful. Praise the Lord. Where is it found? In the Bible. Praise the Lord. And again, in Exodus 23, verse 26, it says, None of you should, shall cast your young. You will not miscarry. 23 and 26. Exodus 23, 26. Praise the Lord. Please. They shall nothing cast her young, nor be 
barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Who is speaking? God. Hold on, don't, don't remove that verse. What does God mean here? It means that in your lifetime, you are not allowed to be barren. God has spoken it. Barrenness could be in the body, the fruit of the womb. It could be in your career. No. While others are failing exams, you'll be passing exams. Promotional exams. Praise the Lord. While others are not receiving favor, for the past few weeks we've been studying on favor on, on in prayer range. You will be favored. While others may be dying young, you will do what? Fulfill your days on earth. The number of thy days I will fulfill. None of us will die premature death. None of us will die accidental death. None of us will die purposeless death. Don't die careless death. No, it's not your portion. The Lord will arise and honor his word in your life in the name of Jesus. Are you broken hearted? Let's look at what Psalm 34 says. Psalm number 34 and verse number 18. Psalm 34 verse number 18. The Bible says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and serve such as be of a contrite spirit. Now, God is nigh unto you. When you are discouraged, you are, you know, you, 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 you are just broken. And that brokenness should be in spirit and in truth before God. Let your spirit be open unto God. Can you read NLT for me in that Psalm 34 verse 18? Later, if you are there. Psalm 34 18. Read another version. NLT or messenger or, or passion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is someone there? Psalm 34 verse 18. God is close to the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. He rescues those whose spirit are crushed. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's close to you. He will rescue you. No matter how crushed you are. A close example I always cite is Hagar. Hagar was the how, um, maid of Sarah. And so when Sarah drove her away with Ishmael, what happened to her? She was just there helpless. Leave that verse, please. She was there helpless. And then what happened? God directed her to where she could get water. That was her source of life for the baby and for herself. God is nigh. He's very close to you that is broken hearted. And he's there to rescue you whose spirit is crushed. Did you hear the word? Your spirit is just crushed. You're just broken. You just feel that the end has come for me. There is no hope for me again. Dearly beloved, if you are of contrite spirit, if you are of a brokenness before God in spirit and in truth, God is there to help you. Praise the Lord. God is there for the afflicted. Psalm 34 verse 19. Let's still read the next verse. Psalm 34 19 says that your afflictions may be many. They may be many. But God is what able to deliver you from all of them. Many of us are afflicted. We are frustrated. God is what faithful. Verse 19. 34 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, not of the unrighteous. And say, God is able to deliver you from them all. Are you feeling downcast, low, and frustrated? Zechariah 12, 8. Zechariah 12, 8. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8. Stay on the word of God. I read the message Bible. It says, on the big day, short King James said, on that day. He said, I will look after everyone who lives in Jerusalem. Where is Jerusalem? The city of God. Whoever dwells in the presence of God, God is doing what? Looking after you. So that the lowliest and the weakest person will be as glorious as David. And the family of David itself 
will be God-like. Hallelujah. Like the angel of God leading the people. Now, what that message, that passage is saying is that you are the sender. I like this. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's read this NLT. I love this. He said, on that day, the Lord will defend the people of Jerusalem. Are you in the city of God? Yes. The weakest among them will be as mighty as King David. And the royal descendants will be like God, like the angel of the Lord who goes before them. Praise the Lord. Did you see this? It doesn't stop with you. We sang a song from generation to generation. We worship you. Nations and tongues will bless the Lord. And then from generation to generation. You will be like David. Royal, special, anointed, appointed by God. Praise the Lord. Stay on the word of God. Don't move. Some of you are tired. I've been doing this thing. I've been doing, I'm doing, I'm tired. Let me do my own way. Uh-oh. Hmm. You don't have a way. Oh. It is one that have life. That can do his own or her own way. Is your life in your hand? Do you know when you will die? Many people sleep and they don't wake. And you are still playing with your life. Stay on the word of God. Depend not on yourself. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 verse 10. Proverbs 24 verse 10. No matter how weary you are. If you faint in the day of adversity. Your strength is small. Many of us give up easily. When I had accident in 2010, I remember my colleague, one of my colleagues called me and said, oh, Sarah, you're very strong. My, my brother-in-law's case was not this bad. And he just gave up on himself. He said he can't stand the pain and he, he left. Oh, I, I, I passed through a lot. But I stayed on the word of God. I remember some of my colleagues said, ah, Sarah, let's go to this man of God, this ministry, they pray, anything is possible. I said, okay. If Daddy Joe, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye, that I am following as my general overseer. And I've been in the camp several times. I have seen people that were short, suddenly grew uh, tall immediately. I've seen their trousers jump up. I was in that uh, convention that year. I've seen, I've heard of a woman who had no womb. I was in convention that year. And I heard or Holy Ghost service, I can't remember precisely. I heard him prophesy. And it was so. I was there. And I saw two, over 2,000 witches delivered. He said, some of you came here. And then you came with witches. You are witches and witches. And you have come out here. I've heard so many things that God has used him to do. I said, if God cannot use him, in my own case, uh, let's forget it now. Let me just follow him. At least I know he's a righteous man. He lives holy. Praise the Lord. Stay on your path. Many of us are hallowed in church. We jump from one church to the other. Uh, today, church A. Tomorrow, church B. We are looking for deliverance, for prosperity, everything. Stay on the word. Praise the Lord. What does the word of God say? Is your church a Bible-believing church? Is your church a Bible-living church? Because some people are believing, but they don't live. They know, eh? the Bible says so. Yes, we know. Do they leave the Bible? No. Stay on the word. Don't move. Depend on the owner of the word. This is the one that got to me. Hebrews 12, chapter 2. I mean, chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 2, 12, verse 2. Stay on the owner of the word. The Bible says what? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was who? God. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of your faith. Who is sitting where? At the right hand of God. Praise the Lord. That's the summary of that verse. Stay on him. Look on him. Trust in him. Proverbs 25, 19. Proverbs 25, 19. I want us to read that. I love that verse. Don't deviate. Don't, don't be looking up unto man. Man will fail you. Of us are so used to man. Hey, he's my this, he's my mentor. He's, mentors are good, though. I'm not saying it's not good. But don't use them as 
where do I want to put it? I say, God, you know, they can be your role model. You can find it's good. The Bible says in Proverbs 25, verse 19, I love this verse so much. It said, confidence in an unfaithful man. In time of trouble, it's like what? A broken tooth and a foot out of joint. I know what it means to have a broken tooth. So I've removed some teeth. I know what it is to be a foot out of joint. I had fracture on my ankle. So that is how. Are you comfortable with them? No. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is what? Like a broken tooth. <laughs> Ask Brother Monday. He's been crying since how many days now? His tooth is shaking. He's in pains. And a fool, you know, and a foot out of joint. You, you cannot walk normal. It's painful. And that is how we, we, we get ourselves broken hearted. We get ourselves distorted because we depend on man. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Depend on the owner of the world, no matter what you are passing through. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. When Augusta was quoting, I was also laughing. I said, did this girl read my notes? Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. They trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. And he will guide you. Don't trust on man. It's only God. At least I have witnesses in the house. But that Jesse is one of them. I can prove that God is faithful in this verse. Praise the Lord. Trusting God even when everywhere looks bleak. And then suddenly... He turns the page. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 10, 23. NLT. Hebrews 10, 23. He said, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to do what? To keep his promise. Hebrews 10, 23. Please write it down. When you go read it, study it at home. Hebrews 10, 23, NLT. It says, let us hold tightly without wavering the hope we affirm. That's our faith. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Trust God. It doesn't change him. He has the final word. He's a dependable God. Hallelujah. In the message transition, I said, let's keep a firm grip on the promise, on promises that keeps us going. He always keeps his word. Hold on to him, a firm grip on his promises. Has he spoken it? He will surely do it. Quickly, why do you need to stay on the word? Number one, the word of God is a compass. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah 40 verse 8. Isaiah 40 verse 8. The word of God is reliable. Proverbs 3, 6. You can write them down and read them at home because of our time. Proverbs 3, 6. Hallelujah. Isaiah 48, write it down. We read at home. The word of God is a defense. Psalm 17, verse 7. The word of God is a defense. The next one is that it is a source of strength. Psalm 119 and verse 28. Psalm 119 and verse 28. Praise the Lord. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. The word of God is a source of strength and inspiration. 
And in Psalm 119, the same Psalm 119, you go down to verse 160, it says that the word of God is what? True. The word of God is what? True. The same chapter, verse 160. Hallelujah. Trying to scroll down and read so you can see, say, thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgments endures forever. The word of God is true from the beginning. The very essence of your word is truth. All your just regulations will stand forever. Hallelujah. Please take them down when you get to them. You read them. And then John 1 verse 14. John 1 verse 14. I was blessed when daddy read it in the morning hour in the Philippine church. The word of God is full of grace and truth. The word of God is what? Full of grace and truth. Write it down. And then Malachi 3.6. Let's read it together. Malachi 3.6 as we round up. Hallelujah. Said, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The word of God never fails. It always fulfills its purpose because it is what? Dependable. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, 10 says, so shall my word, Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love it in NLT. You can read it when you get home, please. And the word of God also sanctifies John 17 17 it separates you and sanctifies you John 17 verse 17 and therefore it gives you hope of eternal life praise the Lord the psalmist says in Psalm 119 and verse 11 Psalm 119 verse 11 said thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee Decide to hide the word of God. You cannot sin against God. When you have his word embedded in your heart, sin will be difficult for you to commit. Hallelujah. Are you ready to stay on the word of God? Are you ready to hide his word in his heart? Please be upstanding. Are you ready to allow God to lead you by his word, by his compass? The Bible says in Psalm 119, I think verse 105 said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is a thing that can guide you. That is the word of God. Let's just worship God. Let's just bless his holy name and say, Father, we just want to thank you for your word today, O God Almighty. Indeed, your word is here to bless me today. And I know that it will perpetually guide me into the truth at all times. Thank you, Jesus. Everything can pass away. Not the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Almighty. The Bible says in Psalm 23, verse 4, though I pass through the shadow of, the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil because I know you are with me. Your word stands tall for me. I don't know what you are passing through, but I just want you to cry unto God this one minute and say, Father, I stand on the premises of your word. I stand on it, O God Almighty. Your word is true, O God Almighty. Your word is the lamp unto my feet that will guide me daily. Your word is in my heart. It will not allow me to sin. Your word is with me. I will speak it because because it brings power. The Bible says that the word of God is powerful. It carries power. I will speak into it. Thank you, Lord Almighty, because I know that each day I will flourish in you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, Lord, I pray for grace over your children. Let them receive grace, O oh God, to stand on your word, to stay on your word, to abide in your word, to be intentional about your word, that it will work for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.